Hi, I'm Mike. I'm from Intech. I wanted to show you how to use the Eco Shreds machine today. Uh, the first thing I want to go over is where to attach your hose. Uh, that would be right here on the back of the machine. For this machine, you'd want to use a hose between 100 feet and 150 feet. The next thing you'd want to do is adjust your slide gate for the appropriate use. <clears throat> for this demonstration, I'm going to take the slide gate all the way out. This would be for a typical attic install. And the next thing I'd like to go over is how to use the control panel. So the first thing you'd want to do is <clears throat> plug in each of your power cords into separate circuits. And then using the twist lock provided, plug in the blower one and make sure that it does lock into place. <clears throat> and then plug in your agitator power plug. And Mike, what size circuit do you recommend we plug these into? Uh, I recommend a uh, 15 amp circuit, so plug them into two 15 amp circuits, 115 volts. Thanks. You're welcome. And the first thing you'll notice is you want to make sure your emergency stop button is pulled out. The green light will illuminate for the variable speed setting. For, for this machine, you have two different ways you can control the blower, either with the variable speed knob right here, or you can press this button and it'll turn red, and that'll give you the full power of the blower. So Mike, do we get more power from the blower if we press the variable speed button to the off position? So we probably typically do that for attics. Yes. And then maybe for wall fills when we want more control, we put the variable speed and then we rotate this. Yes, correct. That's Thanks. Correct. Yes. Okay, great. And then the next thing you're going to notice here is your rotary control switch. So these are the different ways you can control the machine. If you rotate the control switch to the right one, only your blower will turn on. If you rotate it to this setting, then it'll turn on your blower and agitator. Or you have the option of controlling it with a wired remote or with the wireless remote. So I'm going to go through all the different settings today and show you how to control it. So the first thing is we're going to turn the blower on only. And then after that, we will turn it to blower slash agitator and you can see the inside of the machine. And then just to show a difference, now we're getting the full blower power so we can hear the difference. Okay, great. Thanks. And if you need to turn it all the way down, you can hear that the blower can go all the way down to there. And if you would like to control it with your wired remote, then you'd want to turn that to the wired remote setting. Look at your wired remote, plug it into the receptacle here. Make sure you twist it and it locks into place. And then using your wired remote, you can control the blower and the agitator. So always have to, you always have to turn on the blower first before you can turn on the agitator. So that would be blower, and that would be agitator. And then turn the agitator off, followed by the blower. And so Mike, if an individual wants to run the system with the blower on, agitators on, they want to shut everything, they can just shut the blower, yes. and then they want to turn everything back on, just turn the blower on. Yes. Great. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Yep. And the plastic is just because of our shipping packaging materials. This is a urethane remote that we can drop. It's not going to break. And the dust does not get into the controls. The plastic is not to prevent the dust. It's just for packaging. Yep. Okay, thanks. And then Mike, could you show us how to remove that wired connection? Oh, so to remove this wired connection, pull back on the metal tab, pull it toward you, and then turn it counterclockwise and then remove it. Thanks. You're welcome. And then the last way to control this machine would be with your wireless remote. So you would turn your rotary control switch to wireless and you would use this to control the machine. So similarly to the wired remote, you have to turn the blower on first followed by the agitator. Uh, the agitator will not turn on unless the blower is on first. So we would turn on the blower followed by the agitator and then agitator off and blower off. And same as the wired remote, if you wanted to turn both of them off simultaneously, you would turn, you would press the blower off button while the agitator is running to turn both of them off. I'll show you now. So now that blower button will turn both of them on and off simultaneously. And Mike, why do you put the remote in this heavy duty jacket? 
Uh, this jacket will allow you to attach it to the hose itself uh, using Velcro straps and also it prevents any damage from happening to the transmitter located inside of the urethane jacket. Sounds good. And then some people put it on their arm. Could you show us about where they would put it if they're going to put it on their arm? Yeah, you could also put it on your arm right here and strap it to your arm as well just to allow for easier control. Great. So, Thanks. And to prevent you from dropping it. Okay. And if there is ever an emergency and you need to use the emergency stop, um, I'll show you that now. Just You just have to be sure you pull it out before you start it up again. <laughs> And be sure you turn it back to off before pulling the emergency stop out so that the machine doesn't start up again as soon as you pull the emergency stop out. Great. Now, Mike, would there ever be an opportunity that someone wants to reprogram their wireless transmitter to maybe get enhanced reception? Yes, depending on where you're located and where you're running the machine, there are times when different signals work better, you get better reception. So I can show you how to change the signal that your transmitter outputs. Um, the first thing you want to do is remove this piece of tape on the back. That will reveal a create button located right there. You'll see there is a, it's labeled create, and above that is an LED. So what you want to do is use a paper clip put it in the create hole for seven seconds, uh, more than seven seconds, but less than 15. You're gonna hold the paper clip down and then release it. And we can see that LED light has gone blue. Once we hit seven seconds, does it blink or do anything? Nope, then you remove okay. it and then it'll be blinking rapidly. And then you wanna press blower and then agitator and then wait until the blue LED stops blinking. This will change the signal that the transmitter is sending. Um, depending on if you hold it down for seven seconds all the way up to 15 seconds, will give you a different signal in between there. So if, if seven seconds doesn't work as good, you would want to try eight seconds and then nine seconds until you get the best reception possible for your area. Great. <clears throat> now, now that this signal has been changed, you're going to want to change the receiver inside the control panel. And the way you'd want to do that is by turning the rotary control switch to wireless remote. And you can tell that there's a blue LED that is now blinking on the learn button. You're going to press that button, which will make the sync LED blink rapidly. When that happens, now you're gonna press blower on your transmitter, followed by agitator, and then wait for this sync LED to stop blinking rapidly and that will sync your transmitter to your receiver with your new code. So every time you change your code on your transmitter, you have to change um, the receiver as well. Great, so, so now, now we can start it back up. Yep, now we can start it back up. Thanks, and then Mike, why did you have a black piece of tape on the transmitter where you put that hole? Um, that black piece of tape you would want to put back on over the hole to prevent dust from getting inside the transmitter which can cause it to malfunction so once you after you remove that and you do find the code that works best with, for your area go ahead and put the black piece of tape back over it to prevent any damage from happening to the transmitter well thanks a lot Mike You're